What's up guys, it's Even10 here. Uh, I've actually gotten a lot of questions and comments. People have uh, asked me either in game or in some of my uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, just kind of curious what my PVP fits are, what are my favorite ships, uh, this and that. Um, I do have quite a few. Uh, surprisingly, wormhole combat, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, typically battleships aren't used that often, at least comparatively to like null sec uh, or high sec or low sec or anything like that, just because um, when you're going through wormholes, there's actually only a certain amount of mass you can put through it before the wormhole just collapses and will cut people off on, on either side. So most of the time people do use battle cruisers and below just to kind of save mass because I believe it's anywhere between like three, four, maybe five battle cruisers to one battleship when it comes to size differential and like mass and stuff. So a lot of the time um, people are using battle cruisers and below, but it's nice because when there is actually a battleship, it's very meaningful. You know, you just don't toss them around uh, willy nilly like you do in uh, uh, no second stuff where you know 70% of the fleet might be battleships. It's very different out here uh, in wormhole space So I'm just gonna open up my ship hanger and just go through some of the fits uh, at least have the PvP ships that I use on a frequent basis uh, Our doctrine line of ships is really only for organized fleets when it's like a big fleet versus a big fleet uh, Most of the time we just kind of honestly kitchen sink it. That's the name of our alliance We just kitchen sink whole stuff. We just throw some stuff together I mean we try to fill general roles, but we're not typically we're not just trying to do some hyper-focused uh, composition where we're all running the exact same type of uh, shield and armor and all that kind of stuff. It does help on occasion, but anyway, the first one we're going to look at is the Vagabond, which is an assault cruiser for the Minmatar. And this is the fit that I run. Um, I really like this fit and pretty recently I actually skilled into Advanced Weapons 5, probably about a month ago. So all the fits that I, some of the fits might be a little bit out of date. Some of these fits I don't use as often as I uh, probably should. So I'm using the uh, 220 Vulcan auto cannons. I didn't know what else to put in the high slot because I didn't really have room for anything else. The auto targeting is nice. I don't turn it on. I don't just randomly auto target stuff because I want to be very specific with what I shoot at, but it is nice to occasionally have extra targets to, to lock up. Uh, XL Ansel, um, shield booster here, and I don't have it on here. I should probably put some uh, shield boosters in there. And, and if you guys didn't know, for shields, typically, I mean, you do want to use the smallest cap booster available so overheating that this does have a assault damage control which means we get really absurd resist when we turn it on so uh, it's interesting because the base level assault damage control it actually has lower resist if you're just using it passively than like the t2 damage control but when you turn it on it basically puts all of your resist at like 90 percent or higher so this is basically a get a jail free card that lasts about i'd say eight or nine seconds so uh, these these ships are very very good i really enjoy the vagabond the damage that we're outputting on this and all of my support skills for missiles guns everything like that are at four out of five so um, with this fit we're actually doing about 500 damage but if we're overheating everything we're doing uh, about 570 uh, which in my opinion is pretty good damage I, I this is probably the favorite ship i like to use because it's so well rounded if i'm trying to uh, kill some smaller ships including frigates it might be a little bit difficult if we don't have tackle but it is capable of doing that it can punch up it can punch down very well which is typically why the cruisers in general, especially T2 cruisers, are favored amongst a lot of PvPers because it is such a flexible and fast ship uh, that can typically punch up and down uh, weight classes when it comes to sizes of ships. This is actually a really, really recent purchase I did, which is the Cerberus. Um, this ship, in case you guys didn't know, gets really absurd range for their, uh, for their light missiles. So here I'm using a rapid light missile launcher. These things are shooting out to 77 kilometers which is absolutely crazy. This is also a assault uh, assault cruiser as well, but it's just for Kaldari, the other one is for Mimitar. Uh, Warheart calcification, calcification catalyst just for extra damage. Uh, again, the uh, assault damage control just to kind of save us. So unlike the Vagabond, we actually want to stay pretty far away. And this ship is very, very good at shooting frigates, tackle, things that are obviously trying to take down your ships, but also it's just general damage. I mean, it does a pretty respectable amount of damage if you just put in um, fury and we overheat this so about 540 so a little bit less than the um, than the vagabond as well but i do think the vagabond is a bit more durable compared to the uh, cerberus and a whole hell of a lot faster as well the cerberus is uh quite slow as well but i haven't used the cerberus that much i think i've used it once uh, but I am looking forward to using it much more often, especially in black holes where you can get uh, much more damage or much more range out of your missiles. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. Let's go ahead and look at my, and if you guys are wondering why some of these ship names are named Beefy, Beefy Potato Burrito, Cheesy Gordita Crunch, if you guys don't know, uh, 
me personally, I like to just name my ships after Taco Bell menu items. Um, some of the ships have don't have it yet, just because I haven't flown them yet or I haven't updated it. So that is why I like naming my ships after Taco Bell menu items. Uh, this is the Flycatcher fit uh, I currently use. I seem to enjoy this one uh, quite a bit, but I have skilled recently into the Galente Destroyer, so I will be flying the Eris, E-R-I-S, not the Ares, um, two totally different ships. I like this ship just because it does a little bit of damage. Obviously, it's not even a 100 DPS with those things, but it is a nice way to kind of, A, get on kill modes, but also plink away at some of those um, interceptors or tackle that are taking out your ships. Uh, I'm actually using auxiliary thrusters as well as the hyperspatial velocity optimizer. Uh, usually you want to run hyperspatials with uh, typically dictors like this is just so you're able to um, get on grid much, much faster and be able to tackle the target or be able to drop a bubble as soon as possible. Some people like to run two of these. Personally, I, I do value the on grid speed as well as the align time um, of the nanofiber in, you know, structure here because a five second align time versus a four second does make quite a big difference. I mean, it gets us into warp a whole second faster. We're also moving, uh, if we turn this on, we're also basically moving a whole 210 meters a second faster. So that's about 11% faster. I think that's totally worth it, in my opinion. This isn't a, a completely finalized fit. I do realize some people like to have a damage control here in the lows to get your EHP even higher, but I just value the on grid speed. So I'm able to basically bubble and just get out of there as soon as possible instead of uh, just being able to face tank all the damage. Uh, what is next? Let's go ahead and see here. I do like running this Cyclone fit. It's been a while since I've um, used it, but it's extremely flexible. So I typically run uh, one rapid deployment and one interdiction maneuvers. This is kind of like a long range fleet support with a lot of like small tackle and stuff. I don't know, I haven't used this one in a while, but I do enjoy this ship quite a bit, just mainly because of the really absurd range we're able to pull off uh, with this fit. So let's say we just loaded the Caldari Navy uh, Mjolnir missiles. We're shooting out to 93 kilometers uh, with this fit. And I also tend to put in the targeting range script because actually the, the lock range of a Cyclone isn't that far. It's only 62 uh, kilometers. So I add this on here so I can actually lock out to the range I'm able to project from. Uh, XL Ansel Shield Booster. That is, of course, because this ship actually has a bonus to Shield Booster amount. So we're actually healing. Uh, if you get that skill to five, you're actually healing about 37% harder uh, overheated than you are if another ship was using the uh, Ansel bonus as well. So I uh, like using the Ansel so it's tanky. It could project really far out, but if it does get uh, jumped on, it can actually defend itself with an uh, XL Ansel as well as... So the ship can use, it looks like I did miss an ECM uh, drone on here. So I can technically use five mediums, but like I said, I'm typically running this with other small frigates and ships um, and just kind of providing fleet support for extra speed. So I've run a fleet of light drones just to kind of kill them off and then also a fleet of uh, EC Hornets as well. So if I do get tackled, I can actually break the lock occasionally and be able to get off grid. So what is next? Uh, we're we'll going to take a look at Cinema Twist, my Jackdaw. Uh, this is pretty similar to the Cyclone in a way where it's like, I, I like using this fit where I can project out really, really far. So I typically use the ship where it's a like a tight hole because there are some wormholes that only uh, frigates as well as destroyers can fit into. So we're basically forced to use smaller ships. Um, I like using this one just because A, the projection is really, really far. If we actually switch it to sharpshooter mode, and we put in, let's say the Caldari Navy uh, Novas, and we do the missile range scripts. We are shooting out to 120 with this fit. So this fit is actually really, really good for killing off uh, very those pesky like E warships, uh, like carries, uh, as well as um, you know Sentinels, things like that. And a lot of like the T2 or like the T1, like E war frigates that tend to sit really, really far back. Uh, another one is the Griffin as well, because those ships can sit out to like 80 to 100 kilometers, but I could project out that far, and you don't need a lot of damage to take out those ships, especially uh, with light missiles. So um, I really like using this ship to kind of, again, take out some of those uh, E-War frigates that are out there. And again, sometimes when you jump into a wormhole, people are shooting in all different directions, so I like to just kind of be able to keep everything in range uh, with this fit as well. So with T2 missiles, it goes out to 90, so, Obviously, the extra the extra damage is nice. So typically, I start with um, T two ammo. Then, as they're projecting out farther, uh, I will switch over to the to the uh, Nova missiles as well. 
uh, to kind of be able to shoot them down. So yeah, that's the uh, the Jackdaw. And again, I don't have you know a damage control in here because the whole point is basically I'm just range tanking everything. I'm just so far away that things should not be able to shoot back at me. Um, let's keep going down here. So this is so this is another one. I just I like Bobby Boucher. I don't know if you guys have seen Waterboy. Um, I just came up with that fit name and I'm just sticking with it. I know it's not a Taco Bell menu item, but um, I really like this one. I just like the the fleet boost kind of like helping out the team um, role. So I have a deployment chart just to help myself go a bit faster, and I can switch between extension or harmonizing based on uh, you know what the fleet needs. So uh, on this one, we do have the you know jump field generator, all that kind of stuff. We also have the nano nano fiber for extra speed. Uh, this is just your typical stork. I've seen some people run rockets in the high, some people drop the cloaking device, because typically I, have to like, I actually like to uh, cloak on a wormhole and be able to boost targets off that uh, don't suspect a uh, boosher that is decloaking and getting them off. But things like the bubblers as well as the boosher, you have to be very careful because um, they are very highly impactful ships, so you can, get, you can definitely get a lot of kills or really swing the fight. Um, in your favor with these ships, but you can also just get your fleet just as killed just as easily. So accidentally boosting off your allies, or if you're trying to uh, uh, boost off some bad guys, but they it just end up not working out, and you just kind of remove yourself from the fight, uh, that can also be pretty detrimental uh, as well. So um, yeah, there's a few different ways to fit this. And again, all these fits are just what I'm running right now. Um, I'm actually kind of curious if you guys run these same ships for like wormhole PvP or null sec or low sec. Uh, what kind of fits your guys is um, ships have. If you guys are running like the same ships, what your fits um, look like as well. Uh, here's another one. Actually, the spi I call this the spicy potato. Uh, spicy potato taco. So uh, I didn't mean to make that active, but that's fine. So we'll go ahead and simulate this if it'll let me. Uh, so this is what's called a ramjack. Basically, you are just face planting. Uh, that is not the right one. That's an old fit I ran. Probably need to change up that fit. Um, so this one actually you'll notice it has absolutely no guns but it has a lot of on grid speed um, i really favored the on grid speed uh, with this one because a lot of the times when we're roaming null sec you land on grid there is a radar that's anywhere between like 30 to 40 kilometers off or same thing with wormholes you typically uh, land on a wormhole and there's sometimes there's targets that are 30 40 kilometers off the hole and you just need to be able to tackle them very quickly i love using this fit uh, if you guys have ran ram jacks before you guys probably know why it's uh, fit this way. I actually need to replace, add some more cat boosters in here. But again, this also has an assault damage control. So when you are getting focus, you just turn this on and you're basically taking no damage uh, for the next uh, like nine seconds or so. You're running both of these uh, Ansel shield boosters. Uh, sorry for the alarm out there. Um, also, this small ghoul compact energy Nosferatu does a lot of work. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and put up a video of me uh, tackling a Balgorn in a uh, ramjack and actually being able to hold the tackle because of this uh, energy like Nosferatu. So the Warp Scrambler 2 only needs, I think, six power or six capacitor in order for it to, to kind of keep on. But the Nosferatu gives us nine points. So as long as you um, basically start your, um, let's say your uh, Nosferatu and your like Warp Scrambler within a second of each other. So I typically like to activate my Nos and then um, my warp scrambler like right afterwards so that way the second i get my nine points of capacitor i immediately have enough cap to kind of like maintain warp scram um, it's kind of hard to explain but you can just see in the video how that kind of plays out and i'm actually able to hold scram and be able to generate enough capacitor to infinitely hold the tackle on probably the heaviest nuding ship um, in the game so uh, yeah that is pretty much the the ramjag the on grid speed that i'm getting is about 5400 meters a second if you overheat so the whole point of this is that you're just approaching you're just ramming your face into the ship and if you feel like you're about to get focused or volleyed off you just activate the adc a bit early and you're basically taking no damage at that point all right the next one uh we'll do a couple more i forgot this video is uh it's, it's going up to 15 minutes right now uh nacho cheese sauce this is one I call nacho cheese sauce. This is like your typical Imperial Navy Slicer uh, fit. Any of you guys that run Navy Slicers, this is going to look very familiar to you guys. So it's just the fitting is very tight uh, just because in order to put a compact micro warp drive and uh, like a, an Ansel as well, like it's just the CPU, there's just not a lot to be had there. So the, the whole point of this fit is that the ship alone is very, very fast. 
Um, this, some, this ship is actually almost the speed of uh, some interceptors, and it's only a faction frigate. The whole point of this ship is that you're trying to land tackle with a warp disruptor and basically orbit anywhere between uh, 18 to 24 kilometers without breaking uh, your disruptor. And because of the rig slots here that we have the locus coordinators, it actually increases our um, optimal range as well. So it goes out to 27. We're actually keeping our ship within optimal range the whole time because if we remove these rigs, uh, it actually shortens down to, to 19. And this is just like your typical Imperial Navy slicer um, as well. So I like bringing this ship as well if I just, if someone just needs a rapid response, they're being tackled by uh, a ship or they're trying to chase something down, I'll, I'll typically undock either the slicer if we need a bit of damage, um, or if we don't, if, we're, if we already have damage on grid and we just need to like hold tackle, I'll typically take out the ram jag, so. Uh, the stabber. This stabber is a ship you can legitimately fit about six different ways. Uh, which is probably my favorite thing about it. So the stabber here, as you can see, we're running the 220 Vulcans as well as like two light missile launchers. Um, has pretty respectable damage when I put in, uh, let's say, hail in this. This is what I originally started with. This is like a very, very good uh, learning ship because it's going to teach you about, uh, you know, maintaining warp disruptor range and orbiting. Uh, it's also going to teach you on uh, managing your transversal because you don't want to go too fast or else your hail ammo or whichever ammo you're using is not going to land. But you also want to be able to keep up your transversal so you're not taking damage. This will definitely teach you to pulse your micro warp drive because uh, if you leave it on the whole time, as you can see here, it's we only got less than two minutes worth the micro warp drive. But if you end up pulsing it, you can probably double or triple that time. And honestly, if a fight lasts longer than three or four minutes, it's you know, and if in your solo, it's probably not going in your favor if you haven't killed the ship in time. Um, I also ran the light missiles just for a bit of extra damage. To be honest, I thought these two missiles were going to be like enough damage to shake off an interceptor, and that is definitely not the case. So this is actually what my preferred stabber fit is. Uh, running a capacitor booster just so I can, so I'm able to keep my uh, micro warp drive on longer. Disruptor to hold tackle. I'm also running two newts because typically one medium newt is able to instantly newt out an interceptor, but if they do have something like a Nosferatu, like I showed you with the uh, wolf, I'll activate the small energy newt probably about two to three seconds after this uh, newt cycles, just so I make sure that the tackle is off me and I can kind of keep on my micro warp drive. So the whole stabber, it pretty much lives and dies by having it, it keep distance and keeping the micro warp drive on uh, the whole time. So this is the fit I prefer um, personally. I do have a fit that also does, um, has 425s instead of 220s in the highs. This is this is one I don't use too often, but it is nice to occasionally have a cruiser that can be able to push out uh, a lot of damage as well. Um, you can also remove the, the compact uh, neutralizer and add like more missiles if you want as well, because you can push about 700 damage, maybe 750 damage if you have higher skills with the fit if you run 425s and two missiles. But again, you need to have tackle with it because 425s are not going to land on the frigates that are orbiting you. What else? What other... Uh, fits that we have as well that's pr that's like the ones i probably use the most often um both of these fits are pretty similar i'll go ahead and show you this one uh protein uh this is one of the old this is the fit i had like two or three months ago uh i think i bought like five or six of these things and I eventually i just stopped using them uh this is actually a moa fit with an xl ansel shield booster in the mid slot um it actually does Pretty respectable damage. We had to downgrade to electron blasters just so we could fit the Excel Ansel and all that stuff. But um, with this, considering that we can uh, add the Excel Ansel, uh, we're actually regenning uh, 1,000 HP every four, roughly four and a half seconds. Uh, that's pretty darn good and that's pretty darn tanky. So I think that this fit actually tends to catch people off guard. I think I got one fit with this or one kill with this fit uh, at some point, but I don't really remember. Um, off the top of my head. This is kind of more of like a meme fit, because, uh, I mean, with the T1 frigate, or sorry, not T1 frigate, but a T1 cruiser pushing uh, almost 600 damage, I feel like that's pretty good. But again, you do have to get close because it is a blaster fit. Uh, same thing with this one, beefy uh, potato burrito. This is a Vexor fit. It's, it's just gonna, it's just trying to accomplish the same thing, except this is actually a dual rep with an Ansel, uh, restrained micro warp drive, web, uh, medium capacitor, as well, nano pumps. So I'm gonna try and fit as many um, of these ship fits as I can down in the description, at least the ones that I've covered. If you guys have any questions about how to how to fit them or some kind of uh, variations, I'm also curious what your guys' fits are for some of the more popular ships that I use, especially when it comes to like 
uh, the flycatcher, the stork, um, the vagabond, especially the stabber. Stabbers are very interesting because you could just fit it so many different ways and there's no one proper way to fit it. It's funny because I remember when I first joined, I asked my court members, hey, how do you fit a, uh, a, a stabber? And I literally got four different fits that all were all a bit different. I think that's kind of the, the cool part about the stabber, it, which is why it's such a great training chip because you can fit it so many different ways and experiment with it. But it's always going to be hampered by its terrible capacitor. So um, that is one thing you do need to keep in mind. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to at least show you guys some of the PvP ships that I use uh, pretty much on a daily basis uh, for most uh, PvP fights. Um, maybe I'll do a video on which ships, like how do I determine which ships to bring when there's a PvP fight going on and stuff like that, but that might be for a future video as well. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you take care and you fly safe. All DPS on Baldwin. I will scram him as well. Oh, disrupt, sorry, disrupt. Oh, disrupt. Okay, One more disrupt. Yeah, keep him going. Keep it. Keep that deep on him. Maybe overheat a bit so it can make it faster. Just punch him down. Keep it going. More deeps. More deeps. More dots. Aim. More dots. Yep. Heat. Heat now. Heat now. Watch your heat. Heat now. Heat now. Let it rip. Watch your heat. Two more shots and we got him. Yep, there we yep. go. Heat off. He's, he's for Master Get bitch. the red tree. Get the red tree. Cool. Kill the red tree. It'll be considerably more difficult with the bombers. <laughs> yeah. So get him. He's, he's massively tracking disrupted. So. <laughs> We'll keep on them up. and watch your D-scan for those uh, Tempests. Sorry, guys. Do we have eyes in home on... All right, one of the tackle, I want you to go back home hole now. All right? Call who it is. Boldy going. Boldy, good. Go back to home hole and jump through. Fleet a line to home hole. Kill the pod. We'll cheat. Okay. 